This section is over solving systems of linear equations. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. This is our goal here, solving the system of equations by, and we actually have three different ways that we're going to solve the system of equations in this section. We can solve it by graphing, we can solve it by substitution, and we can solve it by using the elimination method. And what a system of equation is, it's like this over here, where we have two different linear equations, and we want to figure out where did those linear equations match up. And what do I mean by that, by matching up? Well, let me go ahead and show you that when we work through the first method. Solve this system of the linear equations by graphing. So I've taken the exact same linear equation system that I presented to you on the last slide, and I just separated them over here. So all I'm going to do is solve for their y variable respectively, and then graph it, and then hopefully you can understand what we're looking for specifically when we are solving this set of linear equations. So on my first equation to solve for y, all I need to do is subtract 2x from both sides. That gives me y equals negative 2x plus 5. And then my second, I need to add 4x to both sides, giving me 6y is equal to 4x plus 12. Divide by 6 everywhere gives me y is equal to 2 thirds x plus 2. So let's graph each of these in their respective colors. The first one, my y variable is 5, and then my slope is negative 2. So I keep going down 2 over 1 as many times as you feel appropriate, and see if I can get a straight line here. Close enough, and make a couple more dots in this direction, gives me my full line there. Okay, in the red, same thing, my y variable is 2, and my slope is 2 thirds, so I go up 2 over 3. And again, I can do that as many times as I need to in either direction, so I can get an image of this line. And so hopefully now you see what we are intending to do when we're trying to solve the system of linear equations, is we're trying to figure out where do these two lines meet or where do they intersect. So we can pick out the point of intersection here, and that's going to be our overall answer. So in this system of equations, I'm going to think that my answer is going to be 1, my x value is 1, and 3, my y value is 3. So this is my first way of solving my system of equations, and I'm going to tell you the advantages and disadvantages of it. So the advantage of this is you get the visual representation of what is actually going on here. You can see where these guys are actually meeting. The disadvantage of it is that it's not very precise. So I assume that my answer are whole numbers, so therefore 1 and 3, but when I solve this system of equations using the next couple of methods, you see that this is not precisely the answer. So this is actually a guess because we don't have the preciseness of an algebra method. And so again, advantages is we get the visuals, disadvantages is we don't actually get the preciseness that we need. Okay, so let's try and solve this same exact system of equations, but this time I'm going to do it by the substitution method. And basically what the substitution method is, is I solve for one variable and one equation, and then I substitute it into the same variable in the second equation. So you can see that I have the steps outlined very precisely here. So when I go to solve for one of these variables, and I can pick any one, I could pick the x in my first one, or the y in my first one, or the x in the second one, or the y in the second one. My suggestion to you is just pick the one that's going to be the easiest to solve for. And that's going to be this one because I don't have any other coefficients for it. We actually already did this in the last slide. We solve for it by subtracting 2x from both sides. So I get y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. 
what I'm going to do with that then is I'm going to substitute it into the y in my other equation. Make sure you always substitute it in the other equation, otherwise it defeats the purpose of what we're doing. So that gives me negative 4x plus 6 times my y. Now I am substituting in this here, or negative 2x plus 5. And that is equivalent to 12. So now what I need to do is I need to solve for the remaining variable, meaning I only have an x left in this equation, so I'm going to solve for my x variable. Let me just simplify first by distributing this 6 here. That gives me negative 12x plus 30. Combining like terms here gives me negative 16x. Move my 30 to the other side by subtracting 30 gives me negative 18. And then to get our final answer, we divide by negative 16. Reduce, and we get the answer that x is equal to 9 over 8. So now if I compare this back with what I solved by graphing, right, we assumed our x value is in fact 1 because we were assuming that it was going to be a whole number. But here we see that that x value is actually 9 over 8. So it's a little over 1, 1 and 1 eighth. But this is not our only answer. When we are solving these, we are looking for the point of intersection, meaning we're looking for the x value and the y value at the same time. So now I need to go to step number three, and I need to take this x value, and I need to solve it into one of my other previous equations to figure out what my y value is. Now I can back substitute this into any one of my previous equations. I listed original here, but it doesn't necessarily need to be the original one. I can substitute it in this original one, or I can substitute it into this original one, or if you ever use the substitution method, I actually suggest that you substitute it into this one here. We already have it solved for y, and that's what we're looking for, so I can just straight substitute it into there, and that's going to give me my exact y equation. So that gives me y is equal to negative 2 times x, where x was 9 over 8, plus 5. So reduce this here. 2 goes into itself one time. It goes into 8 four times. So that gives me negative 9 over 4 plus, give this a common denominator, 20 over 4, and that is equivalent to 11 over 4. So that gives me my y variable. Now again, what is our official or our final answer? Well, remember, I am looking for the point of intersection. So my final answer should be in point or ordered pair form. So my point is 9, 8 and 11 fourths. And so that is the precise final answer. And now again, once more, if I go back and I compare this with solving by graphing, we see that the one was a little off because it's actually one and one eighth. And then we got 11 over four. And if I were to write that as a mixed fraction, that would give me two and three fourths which is just a little bit less than my value of 3. And so this is the precise answer in mixed fraction form. So we can see that our guess was close, but not exactly what we needed to be. Okay, so we have a third method to solve our system of equations, and that is the elimination method. And so that's what I'm going to be doing on the next video.